Welcome to AWM Now, a small glimpse at how the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College are bringing hope to people around the world. People like Jolene from Holland. After a devastating diagnosis of cervical cancer, Jolene's friend introduced her to Andrew's Healing Is Here conference videos. Soon after, she connected with our AWM Karis location in the Netherlands, where she discovered that they were hosting a healing event of their own. When I went to the healing conference, there I saw the healing journey of Cindy, Cindy for the first time. And when I saw the video, it just was like it was made specially for me. And I just started crying and crying. Somebody came to me and she said, why are you crying? And I said, oh, it's because of the video, because she has the same sickness and she said, but you don't need to cry because Cindy, she's in the room right, uh, right next to you, there. So I went to Cindy and she prayed for me. And the power of God came over me and all the pain left my body. It was like the best experience ever. <laughs> In the weeks that followed, Cindy continued to encourage Jolene to renew her mind in the Word. When Jolene went back to the doctor for a routine checkup, they couldn't find a single trace of cancer in her body. Today, Jolene and Cindy are close friends who minister together at healing events across the Netherlands. Thank you, uh, partners of Andrew Romick Ministries. My life is James. I have received my healing. I can help others now. I always had on my heart to find the solution for sicknesses to to heal people and i was so glad that i find out that that god was is our healer thank you partners for providing free teachings and healing journey testimonies that are setting people like jolene free while equipping them to share this message with others to watch the healing journey that inspired her breakthrough click on the link below amen good afternoon Welcome to Healing School. We are so glad that you are joining us today. Everybody in the banquet hall, you look so beautiful. Are you excited? Are you expectant? I could tell because during worship, just like Katrina said, when she was on stage, she could hear you all and you sounded lovely. You sounded amazing. I was so blessed. Online family, just want you to know, sorry you couldn't be here with us when we had worship a few minutes ago, but this weekend we are having the God With Us production. So it is for April the 2nd. It starts tomorrow night through April 4th, which is Sunday. And if you have not seen any of the productions before, you're missing out. I'm telling you, you're missing out. But this weekend, we have God with us, and it's about Peter, and he's actually going back, and he's talking to all of those that are in prison with him, and he's going through the different accounts in the Bible. And it's really how you see the Bible come to life. I got my ticket. Who has a ticket? Did you get your tickets? Oh, that's great. I'm so glad to see that. Elizabeth Muren has changed the production yet again. And I will tell you what uh, Miss Jamie Walmack, I saw her this morning. She said, if you are prone to cry, bring your Kleenex. So, so that's from the, you know, the head up there. She said, she said, bring your Kleenex because Elizabeth and Robert have changed it so much that it is even, if you were crying before, they said it's even more profound. So that is something, if you're watching online and you're going to be in the area, we hope that you are coming to see the production. And also next week, next week is Campus Days. <laughs> All of my students are excited. Yes, you know why? Because Campus Days is a test drive of being a Karis Bible College student. So if you are in the area, and it's April 7th through the 9th, and it is a way, like I said, to test drive uh, Karis Bible College, and you see all the students around that have on blue, red, green lanyards. Some of them are alumni. They have all gone through the school. And we want you to come. It's a free event. It's morning to, and it's evening sessions as well. So we definitely want you to come and test drive campus days. And for healing school, healing school will be in the auditorium next week. But Andrew Womack will be teaching at healing school. And it is healing school's birthday. So we're going to have a birthday party. 
We're going to have a birthday party with cupcakes. Because <laughs> that's what we do. We give you sugar and let you be rejuvenated. But we're so glad that you are tuning in with us. We're glad each week we meet here for Healing School, even if we don't have it on campus like we did not last week. Last week was our student spring break, so we had... We actually had a replay is what we call it, where we show a previous healing school, and it actually was a campus day healing school, and Andrew was teaching for that. But you know what? People were getting healed even by watching the archive. We were not on campus. You know why? Because there's no distance in the spirit. Jesus does what he does. Holy Spirit is here. He's moving. I mean, if you did not feel him, he is already here. He's already here. So we didn't even have it live, but let me share some testimonies from last week. Last week, it was Wanda. She was watching actually from Facebook, and she said, God led me to this ministry over several years ago, and I went through the God Wants You Well series. She said, I put the word into practice and spoke over my own body, and I prayed. I have been healed from stage four lymphoma cancer for three years and three months. Praise the Lord. So live stream audience, you don't even, you don't have to be here. You don't have to be in the room. Our prayer ministers, even though they are ready to lay hands on people because they got electricity, jumper cables, they are so ready. But you know what? You don't have to be in the room. God heals no matter where you are. Just like he told the centurion, the centurion, the centurion told Jesus, you don't even have to come to my house. Speak the word only. So that's what happened last week during uh, our replay with spring break. Andrew just spoke the word only and people were getting healed. Ingrid also from Facebook, she, I guess she said, depression is gone now. That's her testimony. Depression is gone now. Hallelujah. God is so good. So at the end, we're going to have our prayer ministers here, and they're going to be testimony cards. And we want you to write down your testimonies so that we can share them. Yes, we do share them with the entire healing school team. We share them with Andrew and Jamie so that they can see as well how the word of God is going forth and people are being healed. We also have something called Healing Journeys. And some of you, any, who is here for the first time? You have never been to healing school. Oh, yeah, that's good. We like that. Well, my name is Tracy Asia, and I'm the crazy cheerleader for the Holy Spirit. Just wanted to introduce myself to you. So, but we're so glad. We're so glad that you joined us today. But sometimes people, they will not come to, they might not even come to a healing school. They might not come to a service that you might be having. But we have something called Healing Journeys. And we're going to show you a video. And Daniel is going to show you how to navigate to get to there. Hi there, my name is Daniel Amstutz and I'm the director of the Karis Bible College School of Worship as well as the School of Healing. And today I want to show you how to access the Healing Journeys video library. We've got some amazing stories of people who have received their healings that Jesus provided over 2,000 years ago. Everything from emotional and mental and physical healings of every kind you could imagine, but you're gonna get to see them and their journey of how they received what Jesus has already provided. It's gonna encourage your heart. Begin by going to awmi.net. Scroll down and click the watch graphic. Once the page loads, scroll down and click the Healing Journeys panel. You will see that you can begin watching our featured Healing Journey, or you can scroll through the panel on the right to see our collection of Healing Journey videos. We encourage you to do this because the Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And this is going to be so strengthening to your faith and encouraging to you. You are going to be so blessed and we hope that it will absolutely inspire you to live life abundantly. Amen. So I encourage you, 
you can either go in the bookstore. We have, I think, seven volumes now of Healing Journeys. You can go on the website, awmi.net, and you can watch them there for free. So if you know somebody that's walking through something and no matter what you say, they just won't listen, share somebody's testimony because they can't deny that that person, what, they didn't really get healed. Oh, yeah, they did. Especially if you see certain things like Mike Hesh, his testimony, or um, the McDermott's, their testimony. You cannot, you cannot deny that they are healed. Amen? So at this time, I am going to give away some product because that's what I like to do. I like presents. I like giving presents. And especially when they belong to somebody else and they paid for them. Life is grand. Best of both worlds, right? Well, I read a testimony earlier about a young lady. She said she was watching on Facebook, and she said that she went through the God Wants You Well series. Well, this is the God Wants You Well. It's the DVD, and my brother Gomez is going to give this to some excited first-time guests. Keyword excited first-time guests. <laughs> say, yeah, say that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> See, he's on the cheerleading squad with me, I'm just saying. <laughs> and you know what? All, everything I'm going to give away today, they're in the bookstore. They're online. You can order them. So be, feel free. And if you already received something and you know, well, you know what? I, want, I think I want that again. Buy it for somebody else and bless somebody else. This book, I read this little book. It is called Good Health and Long Life. It is by Rich Kanyali. Rich Kanyali, actually, he is a graduate of Karis Bible College, but he also is now been moved on to the Uganda school. So he is in Karis Bible College, Uganda. He is visiting this week, though. But he is in Karis Bible College, Uganda, and he is over at the AWM in Uganda. But he wrote this book, and it is entitled Good Health and Long Life. And it said, this book is written to give a different perspective of health and long life. It's an easy read. It's a small book. It is really good. It will bless you. I did read it. First time guess? Who knows Barry Bennett? Who loves Barry Bennett? Who misses Barry Bennett? I don't know if he's watching, but I will text him and let him know we gave him a shout out. <laughs> I, wanted to do the, I wanted to give away this book. It's called Did God Do This to Me? Barry used to work in, I think he used to answer the emails, and he used to get all of these emails about different things. Did God do this to me? Did God put this cancer on me? Did God give me this? Did God give me that? And he would answer all these questions. And so he wrote a book about it. So in here is a lot of questions that you could actually use this as a ministry tool because he gives you scriptures and everything on how do you have a conversation with someone but that believes some of the things that happen in life as far as disasters and stuff like that. Amen? First time guess? The last book I'm going to give away was I was talking about the McDermott family. The reason I wanted to give this book away, because like I said, we're having the God With Us performance this weekend. Well, uh, Timothy is in the performance. His mother is now a creative arts student. I think the whole family has moved here now. But she, I mean, every day, her life, everything that she was going through, and they were giving her, her they were, both him and his brother were diagnosed with autism. And it says, autism healed. Because who knows that God has the final say? Man only can say what they know to say. Doctors, they're practicing. Love them, but you know what? They can only what they see in the natural, but we can see in the spiritual, in the supernatural. It should be natural for us that if somebody is attacked with something, that we see them heal. It should be a natural thing to see the supernatural. And I guarantee you, this will bless you. It is written by Deborah McDermott. It's the mom. She wrote the book to share her testimony about it. And at this time, it's offering time in the building. I like that. 
Maybe it's just being in the banquet hall. It's just something about being here. It's amazing. So if you are giving today and you need an offering envelope, you should have gotten one when you entered the door. But if you did not, if you raise your hand, if you need an offering envelope, the ushers will get one to you. If you are writing a check, please make the check payable to Karis Bible College or CBC. Please keep your hands raised so that the ushers can get an offering envelope in your hand. So again, if you're writing a check, make it out to CBC or Karis Bible College. If there is a place on the offering envelope as well for you to write a, your credit card information, if you would like to do that as well. And this is so that you can get a receipt for all your giving that you're giving today, because this is good ground. What I decided to do today, this just blessed me. When I went to the internet to see some of this information as they're pan handing out the envelopes and you're writing out your information, it testimonies about giving. Somebody wrote in yesterday, it was Catherine, and Catherine said, Dear Andrew, I want to thank you for the opportunity to partner with you at AWMI's Foundation Builders this morning. I am compelled to write you and let you know what a profound effect reading your recent email on this partnership had on me. I must tell you that I am a retired senior living on a social security and a pension. I am re I'm really, I'm already a moderate, um, a modest grace partner. There was a pull on my heart to respond to your email, but the, the astronomical amounts needed to begin Kara's student housing project, project, pro, yeah, the other project, made whatever I could give pale in comparison. The reason I'm reading this, because sometimes when we want to give something, we're thinking, you know what, Andrew and Jamie, they want to do this. They, they want to pay off the garage. They want to have the housing for the students. They want to, you know what, and each week they come up for healing school and they talk about all these mission trips and what you're training the students in. This person said that, Catherine, she said, you know what, I didn't think that I could do it. She said, I sat there and she said, I began to divide, you know, just thinking in her mind. And she said, the Lord clearly, she clearly heard the Lord say, if these were your children, what would you do? She said she was shocked. She said her brain went sideways. And she said in, in her heart, she said she responded, I'd want my child to have a safe roof over them and good food and not drive around looking for a gym or something to do. And the Lord's response was to her, they are my children and yours. Now sow the seed. And I'm not trying to guilt you into to giving. I'm not trying to do that. The word of God tells us not to give grudgingly, but I want you to purpose in your heart. Each week you come here, you watch online, you're being fed. And if you're watching online, I want you to, if you just go to AWMI forward slash healing, once you click there, you're going to go to our healing center page. In the center of the page, you're going to see an orange donate button. Click there. And when you click there, you have an option to give. $25, 50 $100, $1,000, a $1 million, M-I-L-L-I-O-N. The garage is not paid. But you know what? Let me just, I just want to say something to you. You can't go everywhere we send the students to. But wouldn't it be just like Catherine, be a blessing to know God, I was able to be a part of that. Years ago, we had a person to come. She was a partner. She came on campus and she cried why? Because she saw what she built. So I just want you to purpose in your heart, get the best seed in your hand, and just thank God for it. Because God is telling you something to give. Don't think that it's what we're needing or what you give is not enough. If it's not enough to meet the needs, sow it as a seed. Amen. And at this time, my ushers are going to be forward. They're going to come forward. We cannot pass the offering buckets. So they're going to stand there. And I ask that you, as you get your offering, raise your offering high. And after I pray, I'm going to have you come forward and put your offering in the bucket. I love seeing all these offerings. I thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. 
I thank you, Lord God, for every offering that is raised, Lord God, everybody that has it, Lord God, to give today, God. I thank you that this seed that they are sowing, it is in good ground, God. I thank you that there'll be no lack in their home, oh God. Lord God, they will re receive a harvest in this life, God, 100-fold. I thank you, Lord God. They will see. They will see, Lord God, the seed that they put in the ground today, God, there's going to be a harvest. And you will show them that seed you put in the ground at Caris Bible College Healing School. This is the harvest from that. I thank you that they give with a happy, hilarious, cheerful heart. In Jesus' name, amen. And at this time, we'll have Daniel Emsteads come to the stage, the director of Healing School. Thank you, Tracy. And thank you all of you who are here today. What a blessing to have you in the house. Those of you joining us on the internet, what a blessing it is to have you joining us via live stream. And we are so grateful today uh, with all that is happening this week. Most of you know uh, God With Us, our artistic production, our creative production is happening Friday night and Saturday matinee and then Sunday afternoon as well. And so it's a busy weekend and they are filming God With Us in the big auditorium, which is why we are over here in this auditorium uh, and going to be turning it into a new product as well. They'll be filming it uh, during the performances this weekend, but they've been filming all week, and it's just going to be incredible. So we have a lot going on here, and you know what? We're so grateful. God is just doing amazing things. He's an amazing God. Amen? So again, thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of, uh, of our healing school today. You know, I almost feel like I don't even have to introduce Audrey, but I would never not do that. But she is absolutely no stranger to the healing school. She's been with us many times and has been a speaker for women's events here and for our Healing is Here event. Uh, for those of you who weren't here, uh, the last time that she was with us, I believe it was the last Healing is Here, might have been the one before, but there's a memory in my mind that is forever tattooed on my brain. Does anybody know what I'm about to say? Audrey is teaching, and all of a sudden, she gets up on the pulpit. And that was incredible. It was, it was you know, powerful and special and funny and all of that. But my most treasured memory of that incident was watching Andrew Womack get his smartphone out of his back pocket and take a picture of what was happening. I thought, look at him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So we love having a good time around here. And, uh, you know, last time I taught in the healing school a couple weeks ago, the last thing I said was, you know what, we just need to laugh more. There is so much uh, stress happening in our culture today. So many things that are not fun, not funny. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes we just start to exalt the lies of the enemy and we exalt the reality of our situations and we just start getting more and more serious. You know, one time this one lady, she had this really, she's, you know, she was just going to love God. Bless the Lord. <laughs> you ever been around those kind of people? You know, the eyebrow, I mean, mine, mine does it naturally. These little lines in here, you know, I could plant a garden right up in here, you know. <laughs> No, but this lady is just like, you know, she's all frowned and, you know, and uh, man, she looks so depressed. And then she said she was baptized in the Holy Ghost. I was like, I think she got pickle juice <laughs> instead of the Holy Ghost. Listen, when you are really baptized in the Holy Ghost and living filled with the presence of God, do you know that one of the fruit of the spirit of God is joy? So sometimes I think we just need to take a moment to inform our face of what we really have in our spirit man. Amen? So even today, if your neighbor starts getting kind of a furrowed brow and, you know, the hair starts getting tight. Oh, my goodness. Just, just tell them, you know, I'm going to laugh. Join me. In fact, I'm going to laugh at you. So, you know, the power of God, get ready, because the power of God is going to be manifested in this place today. I mean, it already has been, 
but it's going to be as Audrey teaches. Audrey is married to a man named Fred, and they have a ministry called Go Tell Ministry, and you can go to gotellministry.com. O-R-G. They're on Facebook all the time. She does the most wonderful Facebook uh, videos on a regular basis. Uh, Audrey's originally from France and came over to go to Ra uh, Rayma Bible Training Center in Tulsa. And uh, she was there at the same time we were there, actually, living in Tulsa as Bobby Indian's worship leader back at Grace Fellowship back in the day and uh, was with a production called Toymaker. Anybody ever see Toymaker? Toymaker's Dream, yeah, okay. So, um, man, I tell you what, God has brought Audrey uh, to a really special place in their marriage and in their life, in their family. She is a, a, a transformer by the Spirit of God. You're not going to be just changed today. You're going to be transformed as a result of this ministry. So, would you stand on your feet and give Audrey a healing school? Hallelujah. Welcome today. As Audrey Matt comes to teach us the word of God all the way from France. One, two, ah, I didn't know I had to do something. I thought they were doing it all. You get so spoiled sometimes. Oh, Father, we thank you. We love you. We worship you, God. Yes. That's our heart, our desire, with, not just with songs and, and declaration, but with our attitude, with our lives, with our heart, our motive, everything we think, do, say is a worship to you. And so I bless you, Father, and I love you. Thank you, Daniel, and Tracy's not here, but thank you all um, for just having me here again. You know, apparently just standing on the pulpit didn't stop you from reinviting me. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Jesus. But before we start, um, you know, I love what Daniel said. It said, the power of the testimony. You know, um, and he said, it, and it's in Revelation, we said the testimony of Jesus is the, the, the spirit of prophecy. To me, you know what that means? It means that when you see or hear a testimony, it's a revealing, and that's what prophecy is, it's a revealing of the plan, the will, the heart of God. Yeah. And in other words, what he has done in somebody's life, he wants to do it again and again and again and again and again, as many times as you hear it and you see it. So before we start, I just had it in my heart just to show you a, um, a mini video that our, our ministry put together that compiled a little bit, a few, um, a few testimonies, amen. We cannot hear enough testimonies, amen. So, um, and, and so just go ahead and maestro, Thank you, guys. The Bible says in Psalm 107, verse 20, that God sent His Word to heal us. And Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus is the one who came. And you know, it's amazing because when Jesus, when He came, He is the perfect expression, representation, the image of God, of His will, His character, His heart. And the Bible says in Acts 10, 38, that Jesus went around doing good and and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Hi, my name is Layla, and this is my mom, April. Hi. So we wanted to share a healing testimony that happened to Layla with Audrey Mack at the healing conference about seven weeks ago. Layla had a wandering eye on the left eye. Since she was about three, it would wander out, out um, looking to the left, and the other would stay in perfect alignment. 
And we grew up on the word, we know the word, so we've used our authority and called it into order, but it would come into alignment for a short period and then wander and stay out again. And so at the healing conference, Layla felt prompted to stand up uh, by the Holy Spirit and receive prayer for her eye. And when she did that, she saw Audrey Mack. <laughs> she prayed over me, and ever since my eye has been completely healed and hasn't wandered out once. And so we've been seven weeks without any wandering, complete alignment. Um, she's even the goalie on her soccer team because she can see the ball so well and perfect alignment. Hello, my name is Christy Sierra and in 2007, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor on the right side of my brain. I underwent two brain surgeries and it was determined to be cancer. I underwent six weeks of radiation and I took chemotherapy for a little over a year. The radiation affected the hearing in my right ear to the point I needed hearing aids in both ears. And on a Wednesday evening, Audrey Mack was here at New Life Christian Fellowship and called for members of the congregation to come forward who wanted healing. And she prayed for me and laid hands on me. My ear got very warm. And since that Wednesday evening, I haven't needed my hearing aids. My hearing is coming back stronger and stronger, and I'm now able to hear people from across the room, conversations, and the praise and worship music actually sounds loud. I am blessed. Thank you. All right, my name is Elwin Calvert. I, I used to be deaf. I'm not no more. Thank you, Jesus. I have had COPD. It's gone. Diabetes is gone. Amen. No more pain. The pain in the side's gone. The pain in the back is gone. Been there for years. I can touch my toes. I couldn't touch my toes before. Thank you, Jesus. I can jump around and feel just fine. <laughs> I couldn't do that before without hurting. That's it, brother. I don't feel no pain whatsoever. You and I have to speak to the sickness. We have to commend sickness to loose our body. We've got to have that anger on the inside that refuse to accept that sickness. That, and we've got to expect that healing because God is good. I'm April Trupiano and I listened to Audrey Mack last year at Healing Is Here. And I gotta tell you, it absolutely changed my life. I sat in the audience and I had been to 54 doctors. I had been looking for medicine in 12 different countries. I finally flew to Vietnam. I got the medicine. It did not help. And actually, the doctors thought that even with the medicine, that I was probably going to die. And I sat and listened to Audrey, and she was talking about the violent take it by force, and you have to get angry. And I was sitting in my chair thinking, you have no idea how angry I am. And I got a little frustrated, but then she kept talking and I kept listening and she was talking about how you have to have the authority and you have to take the authority that God has given you, that God had given me. And I will just tell you that once that really sank in and as she just kept talking and I kept listening and understanding the authority, the way she teaches it, I will tell you that I went home from Healing Is Here after hearing Audrey Mack and I was completely healed after nine and a half years of being ill. When I was a senior in high school, I got really sick with mono and that turned into chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. I also had food and environmental allergies. And unfortunately, that lasted for 10 years. I was almost totally bedridden. Well, one night, a friend asked me to go to my church because we had a guest speaker and it was Audrey Mack. I was really just too sick to go. I could barely get out of bed, but I decided to go. And as I was getting dressed, I heard in the back of my mind, wear the color blue. Well, I ignored it and continued to get ready, and then I heard again, wear the color blue. The only blue thing I had in my closet was an old dirty blue shirt, but I put it on anyway because really I didn't care. I was so sick. I had to have help getting to the church and getting in the church. I sat down immediately, and I remember everyone was worshiping and praising the Lord, and I just thought, I feel so bad. I want to go home. And then Audrey gets up, and she starts uh, ministering to us on healing. And I'm not really paying attention because my symptoms are just screaming at me. And then she says, did the Lord tell you to wear the color blue? And I looked down at my blue shirt and thought, oh my gosh, he told me to wear blue. So she certainly had my attention. And I listened to her as she preached. And then afterwards, I went up and met her and she prayed for me and ministered to me. But when I went home that night, I actually was not healed. I was still very sick. And on the way home, which was only a one minute drive, um, I was saying, 
to my mother, oh, I wish I could be healed the way Audrey was. And then all of a sudden I had this revelation that I was healed. I was a free of the Lord. It was like downloaded in my mind and in my spirit. And I ran inside and I called my sister and I said, I'm healed, I'm free, I'm free. And I was walking around my house and then I started running around my house. And the next day I ran up to Audrey, I said, I've received my healing, I've received my freedom. And that was eight years ago and I've been totally healed. Hi, my name is Dorian Kazé. I would like to share with you today what God has done for me. I was going back in my country for holidays, and I was listening to a conference about healing given by Audrey Mack. My family and I listened to all the teachings. A few times later, that's when the doctors told me that I had an ovarian cancer. The news has not been very easy for all the family. We were shocked. We didn't understand. For myself, I had a lot of questions. But I knew that God was able to do something for me. And also, the testimony has really been encouraging me. Every time I was remembering the teachings and how God has healed Audrey Mac. So we got together, we prayed, and we believed God. And even my sister laid her hands on me. She prayed for me, she encouraged me, many people encouraged me. And really, my faith rose up, and I believed. So the doctors, in an emergency operation, took out one of my ovaries. But I kept praying, I kept praying. A little while later, they told me that there wasn't any trace of cancer in my body. And that encouraged me even more. And I asked God to recreate the ovary that the doctors had took away. And today, I am here in front of you to testify that not only I am healed, but I have two ovaries. I'm getting married shortly, and I know that God will give me children. My name is Kate, and I had last year I suffered from depression, anxiety, suicidal tendencies. Um, I was not able to shower or leave the house or my husband had to babysit me most of the time. So I heard the healing conference was on in Colorado at the Andrew Womack Centre. And so I came and I met Audrey Mack and she called out for um, mental problems, depression, paranoia. And I just jumped up in the seat. I says, I am going to be delivered tonight and I am not going home with this problem. So she touched me and I went down like a sack of potatoes. And my life has changed. My whole life and my marriage and my family's life. We are just overjoyed. And I want to thank Audrey. Thank you so much, Audrey. Here is the thing, God made a way. When Jesus went to the cross, he paid not only for our, our, our salvation, but for our healing as well. And 1 Peter 2.24 says, by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. So if you and I were healed 2,000 years ago, it means that you and I today, we are healed, we can be healed. Father, we thank you so much that your will never changes, your heart never changes, your desire never changes, your nature never changes, your declaration, testimony never changes. And what you've done, you want to do it again and again and again. And for that, we thank you. You know, this morning in, in the time that we have together, I want to touch on something. And before I start, I want to say hello to my good friend, Betty Kay. Yes. And Barry, I think you are watching. I just want to say we love you. Yes. And we bless you. And we can't wait to see you back here. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Man, you know, I, I want, there is a, um, and let me add something. You know, God heals all the time. I was just in Minnesota just at the last for a week, just yesterday I flew from Minnesota and we saw two people healed that could not hear and totally, you know, they were deaf, had ear, hearing aids, 
Two people got totally healed. We saw backs be healed. We saw knees being healed. We saw all kind of good stuff being healed. Amen. And I'm telling you one thing, the intensity is increasing. The intensity is increasing. There is a momentum picking up where all of a sudden, and it's not going to be just from the person right here. It's all of you. Hallelujah. And there is with the there there is an expect and momentum, but there is an expectation that also has to increase. And that's what I want to talk to you about today: the power of expectation. It's brand new. I mean, I haven't even written. I mean, it's just like God kind of downloaded it in my heart. Uh, I believe yesterday I heard some things. And so I'm saying, okay, let's just go with that. And the verse that the Lord gave me was in Hebrew chapter 11. And he showed me about Enoch. You know, it says that Enoch had faith. It's the whole chapter about faith. And he says, Enoch had faith because he had the, this testimony that he pleased God. Now, you know, you and I, when we hear that, we think, well, Enoch must have done everything right. That's why he pleased God. No, you know why he pleased God? He says he pleased God because he believed that God is, not was, not will be, that God is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. That was Enoch's testimony. In another word, he knew that he pleased God because he knew that God was good. That's all he knew, that God was so good that every time he had, every, he had that. Because you see, when you know someone is good and someone is a rewarder, there's something that happened on the inside of you that you're not afraid to run to that person. Right. You're not afraid to go and ask whatever to that person. Because you have that knowing, you have that knowing in your heart that you are now good. It was not, well, yeah, once, you know, quite a while back, you used to be good. No, no, he knew, he had that revelation, and oh, that so pleased God. That was faith, faith. Faith, you know, that's the reason why Jesus in Mark eleven twenty two, when he started to teach about the disciples about faith, the first thing he said is, have faith in God. And when oftentimes, and, and, and rightly so, sometimes we teach on faith and we said, have the faith of God. But there's something about that because all of a sudden it's like the weight goes right on us. Yeah. I have to have the faith of God. But this, I don't believe this is automatically what Jesus was talking. He was like, guys. Your first foundation, the ver very first thing is you're going to have to have faith in God. You're going to have to just trust God. And in order to have faith in somebody, to trust somebody, you've got to know that they are good. Amen. That they are not. Today, the moment you approach them, that they are good, that they are faithful, and they are a rewarder. Yeah. That means that Anytime you approach them, bam, all they want to do is bless you, do this. And you know, that is the basis. This is what you and I have to learn to know God this way. Amen. But here is the thing, you know, and we're talking about faith. And we know in Hebrew, faith, 11 verse 1, is faith is the substance of things we hope for. And when we think of hope, what we translate automatically is desire. Faith is the substance of what we desire. That's not what hope is. You see, hope 
It's the word ellipsos, and it means an expectation, an anticipation. It's a knowing and expecting something. But this is what I want to talk about today, is that many people, they know in their head that healing is the will of God. But there is something down here in the heart where they know healing is the will of God, but they come to receive heal with that expecting, automatically expecting it. Why? Because somewhere down along the road, something happened that caused your heart to lose that expectation. Remember, you know, and the Lord brought me back to a place. And you know, it is so easy sometimes to lose that expectation. You know, in he, in, I believe it's in Proverbs 12, it says, hopes defers makes the heart sick. And when you don't have that hope, which is that anticipation, that expectation, all of a sudden you approach God, you might know he's good, but you don't approach him like Enoch approached God with that anticipation, that expectation that, bam, I'm going to receive something. I'm going to get something because he is always a rewarder. That's who he is. Now, think about it in the natural. If hope is expectation, look at somebody like a woman. Have you ever heard, I'm expecting? <laughs> when a woman is expecting, right. Come on. Uh -huh. Come on. how does she act? You know what the first thing that that woman, the moment she knows she is expecting, She's starting to see things. She imagines herself changing diapers. And at that moment, it's still kind of, hallelujah. <laughs> Until you have to do it day in, day out, and 20 times a day. You know what I mean? But she sees herself changing diapers. She sees, she, there is an imagining that comes with expectation. You expect something, and, 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 and all of a sudden, you start seeing it, imagining it. You see yourself. And that, and that brings me back, you know, it is so powerful. And Andrew has a whole teaching on the power of imagination. It reminds me, you know, one time I was in, I was in Switzerland, and they brought me to the hospital because a young couple had just gone, uh, just gone uh, married. And, and, but they, had, they were in a terrible car accident. And, and he was fine, but her brain was completely destroyed. She was laying in the hospital with her cranium open, her brain swelled up. And they said, you know, if she makes it, she will be a vegetable for the rest of her life. That was uh, the word spoken over her. And they brought me into the room to pray for her. So I went, I prayed, and I, the husband was there. And I knew faith, she, the only thing she could hear, she could somewhat hear my voice. So I was speaking to her, but I mostly spoke to him. You know, and, I, and it is what I told them. I said, I understand, and I prayed. And I, and I said, I understand that you cannot, now you cannot speak, you cannot move, you cannot get out, but you can think. So I asked her, I said, what is the thing that you guys love to do together more than anything? And the husband spoke, he said, we love to walk on the beach. You know, there is a big lake in Switzerland like Le Mans. He said, we love to walk by the beach hand in hand and just talking and laughing and just having a good time. Then I, and I said, then that's what you've got to look at and think. You see, you believe God heals, but you've got to believe that he is healing now and that he is always a rewarder of those who come to him. And if you believe he's a rewarder, then there will be expectation. And if there is expectation, then you start 
seeing it in your heart, in your head. You start imagining and you know, good news is that young woman, one year later, she was totally out of the hospital walking talking, moving, and then a, a few while later, she went back to work as a teacher. The power of expectation, and when you expect, you imagine, you see with the eyes of your heart. You know, and, and when a woman is expecting, you know, she's expecting, she can stop talking about it. Did you notice that all of a sudden, I mean, everybody knows she's expecting. And yet she doesn't see it yet. She doesn't have that baby in her arms. But because she's expecting, she can stop talking about it. And you know what? Also, when a woman is expecting, she's not waiting for the day she's got a baby in her arms to start preparing Because she's expecting all of a sudden, I mean, she's buying this and buying that, preparing the, the, the room, painting, buying. I mean, she's taking, I mean, she's doing everything because she knows I'm expecting. That's the power of expectation. It is way beyond just a simple, I wish upon the star, a desire. You see, expectation is, is the substance of faith. You expect it, and so you start seeing it. You start talking about it. You start preparing for it. It's just like if you, here is a difference. If you, ex, if you expect somebody to come to your house, you know there's something when you expect somebody to come to your house and you know they're going to be there because you know you know them and you expect them. You don't look at your watch every five minutes. When are they going to be here? Or look behind the window. I wonder why they're not here. I wonder, no, no, no. No, no. You just do what you've got to do. You get busy. You prepare. You do whatever because you were expecting them to be there and it, it is. But I've noticed so many times when people are believing for healing and they believe God has healed them, all of a sudden they start looking, how come it hasn't happened yet? How come it hasn't happened yet? And they look and they, no, no. When you expect somebody, you have that confidence, they're coming. Yeah. Don't look at me so innocent <laughs> and holy. There is that confidence that the person is going to be there. And therefore, you just go about your day, go about your preparation, what you have to do. And all of a sudden, time, because there is that confidence, expectation, time is no longer an issue. You just expect they're going to be there. It's way silent in this place this afternoon. The power of expectation. I love that in Acts 3 verse 5, he says, when Peter and John came to the gate beautiful, he said, when he says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give I unto thee. And he says that the, the man give them his attention, expecting to receive something. Expectation, hallelujah. And like I said so many times, we believe that God, that healing is the will of God. We know it. We believe, we know, but there is not that expectation. Which means that somewhere down the line, we have lost that expectation. And that reminds me, you know, and that goes with praying for people. Amen. Where you can lay hands on the sick, knowing that it is the will of God for them to be well. But deep down in your heart somewhere, you are not 100% sure that God is a rewarder all of those who seek him. And there is not that 
expectation that it will be done. I remember when I was a brand new Christian, when I had just came to the United States and I went to Bible college. And by the way, it's interesting because I actually I started going by, not to Rama but to Victory Bible Institute. And uh, we were doing outreach in the city. And the first outreach that I did in the city was with a lady named Sandy Brown. And that man was doing the worship and I didn't know him at the time. And it was, I remember I was going to minister for that, for that outreach in the city of Tulsa. And Sandy Brown, the lady that he was doing worship for, spoke to me and says, God, there is a calling on your life to preach the gospel. And I had no cue. And here we are in the same room again, 32 years later. Isn't that amazing? But right during that time, you know, I was so excited about the things of God and, and, and I was so, you know, hearing and understanding and knowing all the new, everything that was so new to me. But I remember there was a, a lady in our Bible school, she was in a wheelchair. She had, I don't know if it was um, author, a severe authorized, but she was a paraplegic, really. And she, they would always bring her on the front of the, 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 the auditorium. And I remember seeing her and my heart would just be like, wow, you know. Uh, uh, and, and deep down in my heart, I was thinking, Lord, I'm hearing all the stuff about healing and faith and God's goodness and all of that. I know, she, how come she's not healed, you know? Have you ever asked yourself yes. that? Yeah, yeah. And I remember seeing her and thinking, how come she's still like that and she's not healed? And then one night, I had a dream. And in my dream, I saw her come out of the wheelchair. So I got so excited. I'm like, oh God, you're going to heal her. Yay, hallelujah. And that next day was Sunday. And Sunday night I was in church. And it was like a big a style auditorium. And I remember worshiping God. And all of a sudden I had an open vision. And in that open vision, I saw me praying for her. And she's coming out of the wheelchair. So I was like, yeah, hallelujah, glory to God. I got excited. So start, Monday morning came. I got right there in, in, in school. And I, I, I went to that lady, talked to her, explained to her. But the first thing I did, I took her you know, wheelchair, pushed her to the very back of the auditorium so there would be no spectators and stuff. And I'm starting to talk to her and explain what happened. I had the dream. I had the vision. God wants her well. Blah. And all of a sudden, the Shekinah glory fell upon me. It felt and looked like a cloud where all of a sudden everything around me disappeared. And it was just her and me. And there was such a tangible power and presence of God. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm talking to her and I'm, and I'm praying. I'm like, okay, get out of the wheelchair now in Jesus' name. And I'm waiting and she's like struggling and she's like, oh, I don't know. And that went on for a while and I'm like, get out of the wheelchair. Now, dummy me, you know, at the time I didn't, you know, I didn't, I, would, I didn't go and to, I should have taken her out of the wheelchair or whatever, but I didn't. And I'm like, come on, come out, come out. And she's like, I, I can't. And all of a sudden I had a thought. And the thought was, what are people going to think if she's not healed? And at that moment, I took a step back. I just stepped back. I'm like, and I th remember thinking, oh, yeah, it's going to look stupid. And what are people going to say and think if she doesn't get healed? And at that moment, whew, the glory of God lifted. And at that moment, I got so, it was like all of a sudden, I felt like from the glory of God, it came like a cold shower. <clears throat> And I was left there. And at that moment, something happened in my heart where I felt, and I didn't know. I went to somebody and asked, and I said, hey, this, that happened. What happened? I'm trying to understand what happened. And, 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 and they couldn't, people couldn't tell me what actually the problem was or what happened. And for years and years, I had that. I wasn't angry at God. I love God with all of my heart. I was not in, you know, in any kind of, off, you know, and forgiveness and kind of heart. And no, I was just, something happened to my heart. And at that moment, I felt 
like God had let me down. I had stepped out in faith and put myself on the line to pray for that lady in obedience to what I saw and heard. And in my heart, I thought, God, you let me down. You didn't back me up. You let, and something happened then through the years, and I didn't get any response there. So through the years, I knew I was supposed to pray for the sick. I knew I was to lay hands on the sick, and I did that a lot and often. But deep down inside, there was a lack of expectation. Because deep down in my heart, I was always wondering, God, are you gonna let me down this time and that oftentimes what can happen in our heart where all of because of something that happened to us or to somebody else that caused us to wonder why weren't you there God why didn't you back me up why didn't you do it and all of a sudden it it, it, it caused we have the faith where we know, God, it's your will, but you can pray by faith with that expectation. Yeah. And it, it was years later after I'd grown with God and I knew enough about God that I understood that it was not God that let me down. It was me who let him down. By accepting the fear of men at that moment, it's like I took a step back. And at that moment, I moved away from that place of Enoch. Enoch that believed that God is and that he is always a rewarder. Always a rewarder. So my, I guess if I had to share something, it would be if you are in that place where you have contended and believed and walked in faith and you, and, and you can even be in that place where I've done everything I know to do. I've walked in faith. I have done this. I had the face of God. I would have to say you got to come back to that place. If down the road you found that your heart was was touch, that that hope was bruised, that that expectation was stopped, that always child expectation that God is always a rewarder. You got to go back to that place where you lost that expectation. You've got to come back to that place where you lost that certainty that God is always good and always a rewarder. And you've got to come to that place and say, Lord, that's where I left it. I pray for people, or I pray for my healing, or I continue to come to healing school. I continue to listen to teaching, but somehow there is not a full expectation that it's going to happen. Or people have come and laid hands on me, but deep down they prayed for me, but I didn't have that full expectation that it was done. It was going to be now here, there. So if you are in that place, and the, you know, of the hopes deferred, of the hope that has been, you know, that, that has been lost, that expectation, that anticipation, that excitement, that you know, bam, I got it. Then you got to come back. And that's what I had to do. And once, because you see, I would lay hands on people with that fully expecting that they were going to be well. And once I all of a sudden moved that out of the way, and I realized, oh, Lord, I had lost my hope right there. I had lost my expectation. I had lost that expected expectation, that knowing that you are always good and a rewarder, then that's where I have to go and gain it back. If it is you here, whether you are here or watching, I want you to close your eyes right now. And I won't just, I want you to repeat after me. Father God, 
You know my heart. You see my heart. You understand what happened to me. So today I choose to ask your forgiveness. And I receive your love right now. And today I choose to believe that you are always, always a rewarder. You are always good. You are always there to manifest. Forgive me for doubting you. Forgive me for doubting your goodness. But today I choose to believe that you are always good and always a rewarder. So you know what you have to do when you lo lost that confidence. That's what Jesus says. Have faith in God or have trust in God or have confidence in God. Then you got to come to that place where now your eyes are not on yourself, but your eyes have to be on God. That is the one that, is, that, that's where your confidence has to be on. That's where, remember Enoch, Enoch believed that God is now and that he is a rewarder, a rewarder, always a rewarder, hallelujah. So how do you regain that confidence? And I love it that they, they sang that song, the goodness of God. It's amazing because I didn't know that song until uh, three days ago. And somebody from, I believe, Norway sent me that song on my, on my phone. And I downloaded it on my phone. I'm like, oh my gosh, the goodness of God. And then the next day, I'm in Minnesota, and the worship team is playing that song. I'm like, oh, hallelujah. I believe the goodness of God. And then I come here, and they sing that song. There's something about knowing the goodness of God. And you know, that reminds me, I mean, think about it, Sarah. She was given a promise, and it took her years and years before she saw the manifestation of it. But you know how she kept strong during all that time? Because she dwelt, thought, talked, remember the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God. In Hebrew 11, 11, it says that Sarah received strength because she considered God faithful. That's why she, she, didn't, she didn't think and dwell on, oh, Sarah, okay, you got to do everything right. You've got to do this. You've got to say that. You're going to act that way. No, no. In those times where she was tempted to lose the hope, to lose that expectation, she would stop and said, okay, I'm going to concede. And she would receive strength and she would regain that expectation when she started to consider God faithful. Now, in a practical sense, what does it look like to consider God faithful? You know what it means? You know what Sarah did? I can just picture and hear her. She spoke to herself and she says, Sarah, do you remember when God spoke to your husband to leave, you know, the family, the land, everything behind, and how God guided us and led, and, 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 and led us and, and provided for us. You remember, and she remembered. She could let her mind, her imagination go back there. And then she said, Sarah, do you remember when all of a sudden there was famine in the land, people were living, people were dying, and how God told us to sow in the time of famine? Remember, Sarah, how God, he was faithful. He just multiplied us and prospered us. 
And she started thinking about that. And then she said, Sarah, do you remember, Sarah, when all of a sudden you were caught into the harem of Abimelech or in the, in the, the, then again in the harem of the Pharaoh and how God supernaturally intervened yes. to save you? You know, that's what she did. She started to dwell and remember all the place, all the time where God was faithful because God doesn't change. And at that moment, what happened? She considered God faithful. She considered God good. She considered God the same yesterday, today, and forever. And at that moment, what happened in her heart? The hope, the expectation returned. And she received that strength where all of a sudden she said, well, apparently it's taking longer than expected, but I'm expecting it. She had that expectation. That's what Jesus told the disciple in Matthew 6, 6. You know, when you are that place where you, 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 you're tempted to be afraid, you're tempted to lose that hope, you're tempted to lose that expectation. God spoke to the disciples in Matthew 6, 6, and he says, do not worry, do not be afraid. And I think he said it four different times. He said, don't be afraid, don't worry. He said, look at the birds of the air, then neither sow nor reap, yet your father feeds them. Look at the lilies of the field. God, your father dresses them even way better than King Solomon in all of his splendors. What was Jesus saying? He's saying, guys, when you're tempted to, to be afraid, to lose your expectation, to give up, in the, in the, and, and, and to wonder if God is going to back you up, if God's going to be there for you, if God's going to be there. What well, the moment where you all of a sudden are about to lose that expectation, meditate on God's faithfulness. You can look at nature around and like God is faithful. There is not a bird that falls. There is not anything that falls that your father doesn't know. And the moment what it will do, it will cause you to shift your attention, your expectation on you of what you have to do, how you have to do it, when you have to do it, where all of a sudden the weight goes from you up onto God. And you're like, I can expect because I know I'm not perfect, but I know God is and he's faithful and he's good. And you have to start looking upon God and his goodness and faithfulness. Mm, hallelujah. And that's why, you know, I love it. You're going to have to start looking at who God is. You're going to have to start thinking who God is. God is a good father. Amen. Here are some things that you can meditate on to allow her to regain that expectation. Faith is a substance of things we expect. If you've lost that expectation, you're not going to see it through. So how do you regain that expectation? You regain that expectation by, con by putting your gaze, your focus, your attention on God, who he is. God is a good father. You know, from the moment I left, I got saved. That is one thing that I, I learned, is God is a good father. When I had to leave France with just two bags, knowing nobody, I didn't know anybody, I didn't know where I was going to go, what I was going to do, but I knew that one thing is God is my father. And because I knew God was my father, I knew that Everything was going to be all right. And so I look in the word into the fatherhood of God. Paul many times says God is a good father. And you remember, we have to ask what kind of father he is. I love it when Jesus says, if you father, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more? I love that word. How much more will your heavenly father give good things to those who ask him? The moment you have to 
don't automatically see the theological, hermeneutical understanding of God. No, go back to a childlike faith that knows God as daddy. And Jesus, he says, when you pray, don't go, Al Shaddai, Adonai, Jehovah. He said, just go, Father. And Jesus says, if you being evil know how to give good things to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit or give good things to those who ask him? Starting to dwell that God is my father. And I love that example. I love that example, you know, about when Jesus was all of a sudden chased with a little woman from Syrophoenicia. And she said, oh, David, oh, God, son of David, Jesus, son of David, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. I mean, she was claiming a covenant that did not belong to her. And Jesus ignored her. Number one, because the, Canaanite, the, the people from Canaan had no honor for the things of God. The things of God, they couldn't care less. They trampled them. They, but, and so Jesus was like, I'm not about, about to give something precious like healing to somebody who's going to dishonor it, trample it, misuse it. So he just waited. And finally, when she shifted from trying to use the name of God as a method, as a principle, as a 10 step to, as trying to imitate other. And let me say this, that's a teaching in itself. So many times that's the error we make. We hear a message, we hear a teaching, we hear a word, and all of a sudden we try to take it, just like that little lady, and apply it like a method. If I say the same thing, if I do the same thing, if I act the same way, God's going to heal me. But you cannot and never approach God on the basis, like I said, like, you know, Enoch had that testimony that he pleased God. And that's what we think. I'm doing everything right. I'm confessing the right way. I'm doing what he did. I'm acting like he did. I'm, you know, and you use the word of God like a method and it doesn't work. There is no life. Just like that little lady. She was using the name of God, the, the, the word of God like a method, like a, almost like trying to, you know, 10 step two and five step to this and and it didn't work. And finally, the disciple says, Lord, don't you see she just, she's after us. Don't you gonna let her do, say something, do something? And Jesus said, it is not good to give the bread of the children and throw it to the little dogs. And here in the context, he was talking about healing. And you're like, wow, why did he call her a little dog? Here again, because Jesus knew that healing was the bread of the children. And he was not just going to throw it to somebody who would just trample on it, dishonor it. But then all of a sudden, she came to that place of true humility. She came to that place where she said, Lord, I'm not approaching you just as a 10 step to how to, and I'm going to know my works, my walk. Is that what's going to please you? Now, she came to that place of love, of humility, of reality, of authenticity, of this is what you see is what you get. And she said, Lord, I know, but even the little dog, they just take the crumb that fall from the master's table. At that moment, she got real. She said, yeah, you're right. In our nation, we don't honor the things of God. He said, but somehow I believe that you are good. I believe that you are faithful. I believe that you are a God of compassion. You are, and at the moment where she started to approach God on the basis of who he is, of his love, of his compassion, of his nature, of his faithfulness, the power flew. And Jesus says, whoa, I have not seen so great faith in Israel. I have not seen that kind of faith. Why? Because her faith was no longer in herself. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to uh, imitate the 10 step to healing yeah, yeah. or the five sermons to to wholeness. 
No, no. All of a sudden, she got real, you people. She got authentic. She said, I, here is my heart. That's who I am. I, yeah, I'm a Canaanite. Yeah, I don't deserve it. Yeah, but I know you're good. My faith is in you. And the moment she considered him good, faithful, full of compassion. You see, that's why Jesus says, have faith in God. Have faith that should not rest on our 10th step two, on what we do and don't do. Our faith, our foundation has to rest on God. And once you know God, that he's a good, he's faithful, he's a rewarder. Then you approach him with a boldness and with expectation. You regain that expectation because expectation, you lose it when you start looking too much on yourself. And when you start looking on God, then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, he is good. Whoa, he's compassionate. Whoa, he's faithful. Oh, he's a rewarder. Always a rewarder. And once you, I mean, it's like somebody going to a bank to borrow money. If they know the banker is good, generous, kind, and favorable, you're going to approach him with a boldness, with a confidence, and with expectation. It changes the way you approach. It changes the way you talk. It changes everything. But if you know that banker is kind of like a mean, hard to deal with, you got to do this, this 10 step and do it. All of a sudden you approach it. There is no expectation. So to raise that expectation, you've got to consider God. Look at God, that he is good, that he is a rewarder, that he is a good father. And I love it. It says that healing is the bread of the children. Didn't Jesus tell us when you approach the father, you can pray our father in heaven. Holy be glorified, honored is your name. Give us today our daily bread. And Jesus said, when a child is hungry and goes to the father and asks for bread, are you going to give him a scorpion? No. If he asks for a fish, are you going to give him a stone? No. Because you know a child goes to daddy expecting to receive exactly what he asked for. So you know, for me, I had to regain that expectation by all of a sudden when I realized, wait a second, it is not God who let me down. It is not God that was capricious, hard to deal with. It was me. It was my ignorance. It was me who let him down. And once I changed that, I was praying for people, expecting them to be healed. And that's when I started to see with that faith and and expectation, I started to see the deaf here. I started to see the people, the cancer go, the tumor disappear, the chronic depressed, totally free. I started to see because I would approach it with expectation. Why? Because I considered him and not me, my faith, my how to do and how well I pray. I have to say, God, you're so good. Oh, hallelujah. God is our father. And God is also our good shepherd. And I love that. You know, we see in Psalm, in the Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Once you understand that God is your father, but he's your shepherd, you realize that he's not against you, he's for you. And you know that Psalm 23 That whole psalm is the beauty, the promises uh, uh, of this new covenant in Christ. Because Psalm 22 speaks of the work of redemption on the cross. He was pierced for our transgression. They played, they, they gambled for his clothes. Psalm 22 is about the work of redemption on the cross. But Psalm 23 comes right after that. And in Psalm 23, he said, the Lord is your shepherd. He shall not, you shall not want. He will make you to lay down on, in good pastures. It will lead you by the still waters. He will lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk. Did you notice a change there? God leads us 
by the green pastures, the still waters, in the path of righteousness. But when I walk, you know what that tells me? That sometime we take a wrong turn. Sometime, whether it's by ignorance or just by rebellion, or just because sometime life happens and the devil wants to persecute you and attack you for the sake of the word, whatever that is, God is with you. His rod, his word, his spirit, his staff, they will guide you out of that place. And I know there's been people, you know, that have a skewed image of who God truly is because it is in the midst of the tragedy, in the midst of the sickness, in the midst of the wandering away from God that they got close to God, that they saw her, him, discovered him. And somehow in that kind of, you know, carnal mindset, we think, well, if God found me and drew me and, 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 and drew me to his heart while I was sick, while I was rebellious, while I was away, then that must be him who did that. God in his sovereignty allowed me to be attacked, allowed me to be lost, allowed me this and that so that I could meet him and find him and discover him. That is a sick mindset. Yes. It is just like somebody, you know, you can go and see a, a big building on fire and immediately you'll see the fireman, the fire engine, the people coming to put out the fire. Or you can see an accident, somebody a bad car accident, immediately you'll see the ambulance. You'll see the first responders. Wouldn't it be twisted and sickly to say, well, every time there is a fire, there is the fireman. Every time there is an accident, there is the ambulance. I wonder if they are the one that are, are the cause of it. Yeah. If they're the one that instigated everything. That would be weird, wouldn't it? You wouldn't even think. You, know, you just know that every time there is a fire, bam, the, the firemen come. Every time there is an accident, bam, the ambulance come. That's who they are. That's their job. That's their, their, their mission. But why do we accuse God of being the instigator of our problem because it's in the middle of it that we found him? That's a twisted mindset. No, God is just a first responder. <laughs> as soon as you, you, you know, though you walk in the valley of the shadow of the Lord, you don't have to fear because God will be a first responder. He will be right there, right now to get you out, to heal you, to draw you, to help you. That's who he is. He is a shepherd. And I love, that's the kind of shepherd he is. And I love that in Ezekiel 34. In Ezekiel 34, the prophet was actually rebuking the leaders of the day, the priest, the leaders. And he, and, 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 and he said, God has that against you. Oh, you shepherd of Israel, because you have not led, you have not found the lost. You have not strengthened the weak. You have not healed the wounded. In another word, God is showing the, the mission and the role of a shepherd is to find, to strengthen, to heal, to find and to bring back. That's who God is. He is a good father. He is a good shepherd. And God is also our husband. And I love that Paul told, he said, you know, a good husband, what is he going to do? A good husband is going to minister to his wife to make her beautiful to make us strong, to sanctify her by the washing of the water of the word. He's gonna, a good husband is gonna cover her with gifts. 
A good husband is going to compliment her, help her to be the best she can. And God is our husband. That's who he is. To restore that hope from God. Because once we understand he is our good father, he cannot deny himself. He is our good shepherd. And you know that's what I, yes, Lord. That's the role of a shepherd, as if a sheep is wandering. He's there to find him and bring him back on the path. That's why God sent us the Holy Spirit. My friend, for me, the greatest revelation I discovered is no matter when or how I am being attacked by the devil, I am not left on my own to walk out of the valley. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2.14, thanks be to God who always leads us to triumph. He is that rod and that staff that wants to lead us in the place. I have learned that when I'm attacked in my body, my first instinct is not automatic, automatically to run to every sermon I can find. My first response is to turn to Holy Spirit. And I let him guide me to the right message, guide me to the right place. And I let him lead me, guide me as the shepherd who leads and guides to that place of victory, to that place of healing. That's why healing is not about accumulating so many messages. Healing, it's about having that relationship between the word and the spirit. You feed your heart with the word, but you always lean on Holy Spirit, the good shepherd, the husband in the family to lead you to that place. That's where you'll find your expectation. When your eyes are on, on you, but your eyes are on God. He is the good shepherd. He is your husband. He is your leader. He is your good father. And he's always, always a rewarder of those who seek him. And if you are at that place where you feel you've lost that hope, that expectation, then go back to the place to get to know God of who he is. Because when you know somebody, their goodness, their faithfulness, their strength, their willingness, expectation will rise again. Boldness will rise again in your heart. And it's easy that way to expect something good. Father, I just bless you today. There is somebody here, you've had digestive problems. It's like almost, this is what I heard, a digestive problem where you have a very hard time. It's always a battle for you to go to the bathroom. It's always a fight for you to go to the bathroom. Is there anybody here? Just come here, sweetheart. I know it took humility to just raise your hand. Because you don't, it's, no, it's never good for people to know your business, right? Literally. But right now, I thank you, Lord, that whatever is blocking, I call that intestinal blockage right now to go. The anointing is all over you right now because your Father is good. You are here at the right place at the right time. So I declare you healed right now. Any intestinal blockage, whether it's in the colon, the stomach, the intestine, whatever blockage, I command it to be dissolved and gone. Take a big breath right now. Oh, hallelujah. It's the anointing right now. The anointing. God is good. 
He knows your name and your address and everything about you. Your neck too. And your head, you have migraines? No, just uh, I was bored with something and I don't know. Well, do you have, do you have a headache right now? Yeah, on the right. On your right, right is here. So Father, I call first that neck. Ooh, there is a anointing all over you. You are hot as a fire coal. coal. <laughs> Father, I just thank you right now. I speak to every disc, ligament, nerves of the neck right now. I call it right now, healed. Any blockage, any disc, any, in Jesus' name, malformation or whatever pain, go. I call right now flexibility to return in Jesus' name. Start moving in Jesus' name. I call you healed in your neck. Just let me do it, honey. I'm going to give your glasses to the person Sometimes behind. Sometimes I swallow blood. Like, I don't know if there's brain damage. Father, I just call your brain. No, I call aneurysm not bound. I call any cell problem. Don't pray, just receive, honey. I call that brain healed in Jesus' name. Mm, the anointing of God right now. Headache, you go. Neck, be healed. Just let me do, just let me, let me move your head. Don't be afraid. Just take a big breath. Father, right now, anointing, be healed, be healed. your neck just do it yourself go to the right to the left move it every way hallelujah what's happening it's stronger it's stronger is the headache still there uh, no. Hmm? No. it's not there anymore well that's good <laughs> so father I thank you right now for a loosening of every nerve, ligament, and muscles right now. A loosening. Thank you, Father. Oh, Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that Beth is coming here one way and she'll leave a different way, totally healed and whole right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Is that somebody you've had wrong heart palpitation? All of a sudden, you feel like your heart is missing a beat. It's like, oh, you cannot run. You cannot, and if you do anything, you feel like <sighs> you got a hard breathe. It is you, honey. What do you have, heart palpitation? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You ready to be free? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. Father, anybody else? Come here, sweetie. I speak to your heart right now. Just thank you. Hallelujah. Now, do you expect? Yeah. Because it's now, it's not tomorrow. God is. Yes. God, it's not will be, it is now. So just right now, I thank you because he's so good. He's so faithful. I speak to that heart and I command that heart to be healed and whole. Any heartbeat skipping, any irregularity, in, in that heart right now, I cancel that assignment. I, can, I call that heart whole, beating at the right rhythm. Right now, I can even feel your heart slowing down. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. When you came, your heart was ba, 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 feeling so hard. And now it's like peace. Lord, I thank you right now. Who? Healed, healed. It's now, oh, that anointing. Oh, hallelujah. Give me your hand. 
Oh, just stay here a second. The Holy Spirit is all over you. Is doing a whole work in your heart. Shh. Oh, wow. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Shh. Thank you, Lord. A new heart. A new heart. New heart. We call that assignment from hell canceled over your life. I thank you for the goodness of God. You see the goodness of God right now. Father, I thank you right now. I speak to that heart. I command the heart right now. Is it heart palpitation? Yeah, it just, it's, it does it every once in a while. It takes my breath away just for a second. It just does it every once in a while. Just receive right now healing in Jesus' name. Receive it. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. It's yours. I call that heart to be healed and to be well. Come here, sweetheart. Come here. This is what I want you guys to do. Take your hand. Go running around the room together. Come on. Hallelujah. I mean, running, not walking, running. Do I need to do it with you? Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, Sharavarara Kaseri. Running means running. <laughs> Hallelujah. How does it feel? It feels good. Feels good? Yeah. Hallelujah. When was the last time you had been able to run around like that? Um, <laughs> well, I haven't. You, you know, haven't? I, I dance a lot, but I dance going for it. You know, and I'll stop. And, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, totally healed, totally whole. Hallelujah. No holding back. No holding back. No holding back. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for you are good. You are good. You are good. You are good. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Take a big breath. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, I thank you. More, more. Your anointing. Your anointing, Father. Thank you for Rachel, Father. I speak healing. God is. God is. God is. Try to run down on sea level and try to run up here. Thousands of faith. Amen. Father, I thank you right now for me. Is that a heart palpitation? Yeah. How, how often does it happen? Uh, every, um, always. All, always? Yeah, but I just ignore it. You do, well, you don't have to ignore it because it'll be gone. That's why you hear divine appointment. Amen. Father, I thank you right now for me. You are good. So we expect nothing less because you always are a rewarder. So expect this is your day, your time, your now. Amen. You are the right place at the right time Amen. to receive. So Father, I thank you for that heart. Great peace, great peace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hello, sweet lady. <laughs> Father, go, I just pray for that heart right now. In Jesus' name. I call any heart. Is it heart palpitation? Yeah, I have it already for a long, long time. You've had for a long, long time? Yeah, since I was a child. Since you were a child. So you're still a child. <laughs> yes. But now it's time to get gone with yeah, it. Yeah. So Lord, I call that heart palpitation. Now turn around, look at his shoes. 
That should make you happy. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy, joy, Lord, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. That heart, good, oh, chikare mane neke study. Joy, unspeakable and full of glory. You've had your hopes deferred. It always seems like it's never happening, but God says no. This message was for you today to grab a hold of it. No more deference, no more later, it is now. A strong heart. I call this palpitation to stop completely. And we thank you for a new heart. They're going to do a, you know, the next, I don't know if you get some checkup from the neck up. If you do a checkup and they're going to say, wow, look at your heart. It's the heart of a, a young woman. So, Lord, that's it. I declare it over you, and it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You might as well go and run also. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Heart palpitation. Since COVID. Since the COVID. In January. Hallelujah. Well, we know where we tell COVID to go. COVID is, is from hell. It's got to go back to hell. So, Father, I just thank you right now. I call the spirit of fear over you to be broken. I call fear be broken over her in Jesus' name. Free. Shapere yanali. Free. I call your life back into order. Your life back into order. I call your heart back in Jesus' name. Be healed and whole in Jesus' name. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. It's just that simple. It's yours, I call that. For you, it's not a heart palpitation, it's anxiety attack. I call those fear, anxiety attack, panic attack right now to be broken over you. I call wholeness a settling in the peace of God right now, because God is your daddy, God is your husband, God is your shepherd. You shall not want and I call that hope restored of that place of innocence with the father that place of full expectation and confidence and faith and trust in the father and I break that lie that spirit of fear in Jesus name amen halo high is head and widely high blood pressure Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for Stephanie. I call the heart right now. Be healed. Just receive your healing right now. Today is your day because every day is a day with God. He's your Father. So, Father, I thank you right now that heart murmurs have to stop. Lord, I thank you that the, I call harmony. I call it peace that passes understanding over you that will bring everything into harmony and balance. I call balance in this body. And I call, and I just heard that there has been a diagnosis over you of diabetes, but I say right now, I cancel it in Jesus' name. I say no, no. We cancel it, uproot it from the very root. Amen. And say so there is balance, life, and wholeness over you. The heart, the blood, the sugar level, 
every part of your body coming in line with God's goodness and God's nature of faithful. He's a good father and he takes good care of his children. Just rest in him in that. Peace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start doing what you could not do before. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your anointing. It's not by might. It's not by power, but by your spirit. So, Lord, I call realignment right now. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing, for your anointing. Is it a heart Thank you. palpitation? I call peace over you. I call those anxiety, that spirit of fear that is trying to creep on you and isolate you. I call that spirit of fear of an anxiety right now to lose you in Jesus' name. I declare you free free from sickness, but free from the imagination. Imagination. Lose her. Lose her. All that God has for her is good. No death. No death. No sickness, but life. 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 Free free from anxiety attacks in Jesus name be free right now Jesus speak peace over her speak peace over her Free from the disappointment, free from the thoughts, free from the harassment, free, free. Lokishte karihishti kere free. She kele kone ashtare. Ki eshto I command you in Jesus' name. You lose her right now. Go, go, lose, lose, lose. I speak peace. I speak peace. Joy, joy. Lord, I thank you for a stirring up of your joy, of your joy, stirring up of your joy, stirring up of your joy, Father. Ah, ha, ha, Father, he shed it. Oh, hold the joy, restore the joy, 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 joy. Ha, shed it, it can shed it. Hele, cut it, it can shed it. Ha, da, cut it, it can shed it. There is a tears at the night but there is joy in the morning so I call forth the joy that is in her a stirring up of that joy that freedom and that peace in Jesus name 
In Jesus' name. So I had a complete physical two weeks ago. Blood pressure perfect, every, every test perfect. But I have blockage 50% in the carotid artery and I thought it was an attack. You're in the right place at the right time. Hmm? Amen. You're in the yes, right it's place. It's both of them. Father, I just speak right now. We speak to them in Jesus' name and I command them to be opened, freed, and blocked in Jesus' name. I call any blockage right now to be dissolved. I call right now. Thank you, Lord, that the blood flows freely. Blockage is dissolved. Father, I thank you right now. Take a big breath. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for your anointing. There is anointing all over you. So I call right now, Father God, faithful. You are faithful right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we even call a strong heart. New heart. New arteries. New heart. A new beginning. A new start. A new, 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 because you're the God of new. So, Lord, I speak that over my brother. That's Thank true. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You got it. <laughs> hey, brother. Um, so, I had history of uh, panic attacks and anxiety attacks. Yes. And uh, it wasn't just that. I wanted to get prayer for my shoulder and and back, I didn't want to wait, so I just came. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to Show me your, your shoulder. You have pain? Yes. Where? Well, the chiropractor said I had tendonitis, and I didn't receive it, so I just... It's right. Through. Show me if the pain is. So when you lift up here, it's painful? Yes. You go down like this. You can't do that, right? Yeah. Do you have a, a, your movement? Is it stopped somewhere? I mean, um, they think you cannot do... Yeah, I can't. I, I do like MMA, so I can't jab or. You cannot do this? Yeah, I can't do that. I can't. It hurts. It hurts right here. Yeah. And your back, you said? Yeah, it's been like five years. Where in your back? It's like right here. Right here. Is that like, a, um, what do you call that? The um, the the nerve, the, the sciatic nerve? Uh, I think so. You say, <laughs> does it go down to your leg? Yeah, right here. Yeah, so. Well, I'm no doctor, but I stayed at the Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> so right now, I speak to every joint, muscle, and ligament of the shoulder. I speak to every nerve, disc, muscle, ligament, tendon right now in this back. And I command sciatic nerve to be released. Whatever nerve is pinched, I command it to be unpinched, release right now by the anointing of God, and I call right now healing in this back, in this shoulder. So Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. I call right now freedom of movement. I call right now freedom, healing in this arm, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father, be healed. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father. Start moving your arm, hallelujah. Glory to God. What's happening? It's loosening. It's loosening. Is the pain still there? Uh, it's like the same as my right. It's same as your right? No question, does your right have pain? No. no. <laughs> then there is no pain. It's good. <laughs> Now, how about now start moving and touch your toes? Go back up. Go back down. Go back up. Go back down in Jesus' name. Both shoulders like this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What's happening in your back? 
Move your back. I command all pain, stiffness to go. Loosening of the nerves, the muscle, ligaments in Jesus' name. What's happening? My, I know my left shoulder is healed. Yes, what's that. happening here? Uh, it's, I still feel a little bit of pain. Okay, now let me ask you this. From be, before, from 1 to 10, how much did you have? Probably like eight, now it's a five. So nights of five. So Lord, we thank you. You know why Jesus prayed twice for a blind man? Yes. Not because he didn't think it worked, but because he was <laughs> expecting yes. a fullness. So Lord, right now I speak to the sciatic nerve and I speak to that nerve, muscle and ligament right now. I command it to be healed and whole to its fullness. I expect it and so it is. Sciatic nerve, muscle, nerve, ligament, whatever is pinched, whatever is blocking right now, I call it released and unloosed. Thank you, Holy Spirit, right now for healing. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for healing the shoulder, by the way, God. Thank you. And thank you, Lord, that what you have started in him, you will finish it. So, Father, I thank you right now. Just come with me. Go up the stairs. Go back down. Go back up. So what's happening? Oh, it's lighter. It's lighter. Continue. Oh my gosh. It's lighter. It's lighter. It's doing good? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, because you're getting along now. What do you want to do? It's up to you. Okay. I'd like, I just had that in my heart when that young man came. I actually heard it before he said it. Something has happened with that whole COVID madness thing where all of a sudden people have been isolated and some people all of a sudden without realizing started to experience those panic attack, that stress, yeah. that anxiety, yeah. that oh what if and yeah. if the fear. So if you're in that place where you, you've seen yourself getting in that place of fear and panic attack and anxiety, and all of a sudden your mind starts, you know, if it is you, just I'd like to pray for you right now. If it is you, just stand back up and come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sone katare kesh today. And by the way, young man, that panic attack thingy stuff is gone. Hello, precious. Hey, honey. Anybody else? I'm praying right here to get free from any kind of panic attack, any kind of stress, any kind of fear. Come on. You remember the lady, the Samaritan? Syrophoenician woman. It's at that place of humility and authenticity Amen. that she, she, she saw. It's not about trying to be somebody else or try to, you know, but it's about, Lord, this is it. Amen. Come on, come over here, sweetie. Oh, glory to God. In Jesus' name. Father, I call you right now. Just take your hands, put them on your, one on your head, one on your heart. Man, your heart is in the wrong place, brother. Yeah, good. <laughs> we were going to have to pray for something else. Father, in Elemando Rebe Chande, I speak right now to that spirit of fear that has crept in and tried to set home where ye ought not to. I speak to you, fear, I command you to go. Yes. You lose them. You lose her. You lose her. You lose him. He and you lose her right now. Fear, anxiety, panic attack. What if, what if, get out of here in Jesus' name. I lose right now the peace of God that passes all understanding. A supernatural peace that will replace right now your life. It's a supernatural peace because you cannot understand what's happening. Yes. 
Hallelujah. Glory, glory, peace. Be free. Be free. Be free right now. In Jesus' name. Panic attack, you go. Panic attack, you go. Panic attack, you go in Jesus' name. Free. Panic attack, you go right now. Be free. Panic attack right now. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free in Jesus' name. Be free. Hallelujah. No fear. No fear. No fear. Hallelujah. Repeat after me out loud. I belong to God. I am marked by the Father. Sealed by the Spirit of God. Therefore, fear has no place in me. No room in the end, but only peace. Let the peace of God that passes understanding guard your heart and your mind on Jesus Christ. Lord, I just thank you right now. And Lord, I just even heard something. Some of you that has happened because of the people you surrounded with. There are people in your family. There are people in your family that are speaking death, speaking things. That's you. I heard that. I just heard the Lord said, you will be turned into another person and now no longer take the place of withdraw and fear, but of bold witness and stand and a strong standing. So Lord, I thank you for the joy, a joy, joy that's going to fill your heart. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, I heard a man of God say one time, come here, sweetie. I heard a man of God say one time, sometime you have to start in the natural to end in the spirit. What does it mean? There is a joy on the inside of you that is your strength, a joy that just totally just pushes fear out of the door. And sometime when you, what you have to do is start laughing. And you're like, how do you do that? Watch me. Ha ha he he ho ho. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. I know Daniel knows that one good. Ha 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 ha. Free. Free from fear. Lord, I thank you that you stir up the gift of God in you. The joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Ah, ha, 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 Joy, she shall hale mana hate. Keriatare, sometimes it's speaking in another tongue. Aha, ramaha, kane he she katare. Stirring up the spirit of God that is in you by the laying in of hands. Stir it up. You know that joy, that fearlessness, that confidence, that peace is already in you. But sometimes it's like chocolate in a glass of milk, it goes to the bottom. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to stir it up. Stir it up. Halekaria sande de 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 de. Free, 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 free. Ha 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 It's right there. Ha 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 Glory to God. Free, free, free. Amen. Yes. Oh, what is it? At his age? Yes. That's a lie. He has swelling in the knees. And I think there's something wrong with his stomach. I don't know, but I think there's something wrong with his digestive system. 
Lord Father, I just think, hey, buddy, what's your name? That's David. Hey, David, that's okay. Father, I just pray right now for little David, and I speak to every joint, ligament, muscles. Glory to God. Joint, and I call that diagnosis, that those words, that assignment from hell, I call it canceled in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to take my fingers? I call right now arthritis canceled in Jesus' name. Thank you for the anointing of God right now flowing in his joints, in his ligaments, in his muscles, in his nerves, in his heart, in every part of his body. I call a loosening and a coming back into healing and order in his body in Jesus' name. Free, 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 free in Jesus' name. Free in Jesus' name. And Lord, I call any kind of food allergy right now canceled in his life. You will eat everything and anything totally free. Yes, in Jesus' name. Oh, oh, yes, Father, I thank you. Come here, sweetie. Lord, I thank you for this child. I speak health from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, that he's going to get hungry and eat fully. Eat fully. Lord, I thank you for his stomach. No allergy and desires for good food. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you for healing him. Amen. Hey. One more thing. Yes. Okay? I have something with my hormones going on, a million different weird, crazy, like, symptoms from, yeah. like, some blockage here over all sorts of stuff, pains okay. and things. Well, Father, I just thank you right now. And you, God. Yes, <laughs> Yeah, well, that's the, the, you know what that is? It's right, it's a kalomone e kachiolo koshchede de keshchada. Father, I speak to her heart right now. I call for the blood circulation in her body. Lord, any kind of blockage to go, any kind of deficiency and weakness of the heart right now any kind of thyroid problem right now, any kind of hormonal problem right now to go, to line up with the word of God. I call healing, wholeness. I thank you that the blood will flow through every artery, every blood vein, every part of her body. Lord, I call healing and wholeness. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. You are the revealer the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So I thank you right now that you go right to the root of the problem. You go right to the root of problem and veiling, revealing that which is the culprit, Father. And so we thank you, Lord. Thank you for the healing, healing of the heart. Healing, Father, blood circulation right now in Jesus' name. And I call any kind of stress and anxiety to lose her. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Amen. I have it. I am healed. You are, and you expect I am it. Healed, yes. Can I have a hug? Dave, come here and give me a hug. That's okay. He already gave me one. Father, I call right now. Yeah, I call that little flap right knee. You see, that's expectation. They expect, and I'm like, I got healed of that. I might as well get healed of something else. So, Lord, I just thank you right now. I call that acid reflux assignment stopped right now. I call that little flap over the esophagus right now to fall, go up and down, up and down, to be healed, repaired in Jesus' name. And I say right now, acid reflux no more in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Free, free. My teeth. My teeth. Father, I just thank you right now. I speak healing in her teeth, the gums, the bones. In Jesus' name, just receive. Amen. If you are in this place and you need healing in your body, amen, 
I want you to take your hand because you remember faith is not in a person. Faith is in God. Your expectation is in God. And there's something that happens when you put your expectation on God and not automatically a prayer minister, but you put your expectation on God. There's something powerful there. So wherever you are right now and you need healing, put your hand right now over the part of your body that needs healing. In the name of Jesus, I release healing anointing under the sound of my voice. Father, you see the hands, you hear the heart, you can see the expectation. Lord, I just release the anointing right now in the shoulders, in the knees, in the intestinal system, in the heart, in the eyes, in the head, in the backs, in the shoulders, in the heads, I command tumors to go. I command flexibility to return in every joint and ligament in Jesus' name. I command pain to loose those bodies right now. We expect in Jesus' name. We expect right now your anointing that is here, your fire that is here to move, to heal, to touch, to rearrange. To, in Jesus' name, thank you, Father, and start doing what you could not do before. Start releasing your faith. Start, you know, you expect it. It is done. So now let's life go as usual. Let's just move forward. Hallelujah. Knowing it's done. It's done. It's done. Hallelujah. If you couldn't walk, go walking. If you couldn't bend, go bending. If you couldn't ray, you know, walk up the steps, go start walking up the steps. If you couldn't eat, go eat. If you couldn't move your shoulder, start moving. If you couldn't move your hand, move your hand. If you couldn't hear, start listening to me. In the name, if you couldn't move your neck, move your neck. Start in Jesus' name because you expect, therefore you expect it. And you do it. Hallelujah. Who can see something happening? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I see your hand. Glory to God. Yes. I'll start moving. Hallelujah. Start running. You know why I, I told people start running. Start going up. Start moving. Because when you expect something, you start do something. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. What's happening to that gentleman in the back? <laughs> you just piggyback. That's it. Come on. <laughs> hallelujah. Come on to the stairs, that's it, sisters. Woo. Hallelujah. With all your gusto, <laughs> up and down. <laughs> Come back up. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We expect it. We know there's nothing less but. So, Father, we thank you. What's happening in your knees? They're getting better. So, Father, we thank you for what you have started. You finish it. So, Lord, we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. What's happening? You feel out of breath. That's what it is, right? It feels better. Start moving your knees. What did you have? What was happening? 
on bone. <laughs> bone on bone. Yeah. Glory to God. Well, glory to God. You're healed. You're healed. Could you do it like this before? No. No? You couldn't do it like this before? No. Glory to God. Yeah, let's one more time. Let's do it back one more time. No pain? Not much. <laughs> Lord, we commend no pain. no pain. Not much is not good enough. No pain. No pain. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you right now. Fullness, fullness, what you started. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord. Knees be healed. Cartilage be recreated. Ligaments, tendons, nerves be strengthened in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How does it feel? Good. Feels good? Yes. Hallelujah. As she goes for one more. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Do you want to call the... We can call the prayer ministers, but if you still want to pray for people, you can. It's up to you. Okay. Hallelujah. Why don't you have the prayer ministers there? Come. And then we can do it together. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that is. Prayer ministers, anointed, appointed, powerful. Major healing when you were here last August. Oh, I want to hear it. I'd love to tell you. Yes, I'm going to wait and you're going to tell me. Okay. Actually, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have you tell it right now. Is that okay? Okay. okay. Wait, wait, here you go. Oh. Prayer ministers still come. Yes. Yeah. So go ahead and tell, tell us what happened. Okay. You know, I'm willing to be put on the spot like this, but this is really graphic. Ah, okay. Okay. <clears throat> this is at Healing is Here conference. Um, Audrey had, uh, she was on the stage and she said, God wants to heal all blood or bleeding issues. And she said, I got a word of knowledge this morning. Hemor, Hemorrhoids. Hemor, and the crowd said hemorrhage, and she said no, but that too. And then she said hemorrhoids, bleeding hemorrhoids. Well, since 1991, I've had at least six dramatic healings of different things. And I'm a prayer minister. I've been pursuing healing forever. Amen. And um, <clears throat> so I had a lot of shame associated with this. And it was so personal, I didn't want to tell people. And that very day, um, one of the, I don't know if it was you or Todd White, whoever was there earlier, said, pray for the person next to you. And this lady told me something personal, so I told her that. But honestly, I didn't have much hope or faith in, in the prayer for healing. Expectation. Yes. <laughs> and um, I thought, this doesn't hurt me. Um, it's, it was like my secret. So anyway, but it was bad, and it was blood, fresh red blood that came at, after a bowel movement. And I didn't know what it was. I talked to a nurse who said, is it dark or is it bright red? I said, bright red. She said, okay, then it's not coming from anywhere else. It's probably bleeding hemorrhoids that are irritated after a bowel movement. So I was up in the balcony, and, and thankfully, uh, because she mentioned other things. Audrey mentioned all bleeding issues. Um, uh, what is the cancer of the blood? Limb, um, um, leukemia, leukemia. Uh, hemorrhage, any blood issue, stand up and the people around you pray. So I was willing to stand up for that. And uh, a guy named Dan came down after and he said, I saw a laser going towards you and heat in my hand. I believe you're healed. And the next day, nothing. However, that evening, there was some blood again. And Audrey, thankfully, was still there that night. Todd White spoke on Friday night. I think you were on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. And after Todd got through, I saw Audrey on the front row. And after her, the line finished, I waited until they were through. I went to her and told her what was going on, whispered to her. She laid her hand like on my tailbone and prayed and it's been completely healed oh glory to god yeah and 
Here is something. Today, you are being set free of anything attached to it. God in his wisdom saw it for you to speak it out. And when you speak it out, all of a sudden, there's shame, that embarrassment, anything else is falling off right now. And that testimony right now, there's somebody watching, watching online that is having the same kind. Whether it is a blood problem or whether it's a shame problem and you've been keeping it in the closet. God is setting you free right now because of the words of this lady in Jesus' name. That anointing is going. And at this time, if there's anybody, if you, our prayer ministers are here, if, it's, if you just want any of the prayer ministers, because you know what, it's the same, Jesus. It's the same Holy Spirit. And Audrey just taught on that just a few minutes ago. So there's, if you're just wanting anyone, one of the prayer ministers to pray with you, please let me know, and you can have somebody to pray with you now. That's the problem, but I don't want people to have an eye on me. They have to have on God. So that's why. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, I, I, I minister to them. I, I, I know I can roll in the face, but that's the problem is that all of it, you people, all of a sudden, you're not doing anything. So if you want to talk to me. Well, before we wrap up today, I want to just uh, take a moment to thank Audrey for being here today and uh, ministering so in the love of God so powerfully, so wonderfully. We love having her here, and you can see why if this was your first time. Also, want to remind you that next week is our campus days, and uh, that's going to be awesome. Uh, starts Wednesday morning and goes through Friday night, okay? And guess who our speaker is next week? Only one time a year will he speak at healing school. It's Andrew Walmack, and it's next week. So he will be our speaker next week. So if you can make it, we would love to uh, invite you and for you to be a part of this uh, next week as well. And then just remind you, we are here each week, sometimes usually in the big auditorium, but we are here on this campus for healing school uh, almost every week at one o'clock Colorado time. So uh, we want to, again, just thank you so much for being a part of our healing school today. And our prayer ministers are going to be up here praying. And remember, it's not the person who is ministering to you, but your expectation is in the power of God. Amen. And so as you receive from the Lord, I believe you are going to see exactly what you are believing God for. So again, thank you for being part of our healing school today. We love you, and we look forward to seeing you next week in Jesus' name. God bless.